obviously didn't have the best three first three quarters, but fourth quarter I just came up with some clutch plays. What was the difference with your group there? I like the way we started the game. Yeah. You know, the first drive and the last drive were the were the highlights for us. You know, in the middle was a little bit. Um, you know, was it was it really good enough? You know, obviously fr frustrating and disappointing that we didn't stay on the field more. We had I think we had three three and outs and a four and out in the middle of the. Um, of the contest, which, you know, we ended up having nine possessions during the game, which was probably the lowest number I think I've ever been associated with. But we wanted some of that, a lot of that was intentionality. You know, we wanted to, we wanted to control the clock the best we could. Obviously, not staying on the field didn't allow us to close the clock, but we certainly did in the fourth quarter. So we, we celebrated that, you know, and uh, obviously our defense was fantastic and a complete team effort. But, um, you know, obviously some things to clean up, but our men, our guys played really hard. And, and it was after watching the film, I was much, um, I was much more encouraged. You know, obviously, I was incredibly encouraged after the game that we won and the way we. I mean, that listen, our job is to score one more point than the other team. Period. End of story. Always has been, always will be, and uh, and we were thrilled about that. But you know, as the offensive coordinator, my job is to be in charge of the offense, and I wanted to. You know, I didn't like the way we played at times during the middle of the game, obviously, and then. But I went back and watched the film again, and I saw some really signs of growth some strong signs of growth and some encouragement there that we weren't very far off from having a really good day. Um, but, you know, we didn't make that happen, and that's going to be our goal moving forward. Coach, seems like the first couple of games, the opponent's been scheming to stop the run a little bit. How, how, how much has in-game adjustments been been part of the, some of the success that you've had? Well, I think obviously the new tools that you have access to, you can t see things a little bit clearer than you have before as far as actually seeing the video. Uh, you know, I think our staff is doing a good job of communicating. Uh, I think, honestly, during the course of the game, I think we, I was surprised by the, uh, the pressure that we uh, became under as far as just the blitzing, you know, by Kansas. And uh, obviously, you know, one of the things that helped us is we started throwing the ball a little bit more. And uh, our guys on the perimeter made some, um, some really, really nice plays. And uh, just probably got a little bit too uh, committed, not committed, but just running into disadvantage or uh, looks that don't have advantage looks for us, you know, with the pressures. And we were really close to breaking some of those. We just couldn't do it, put us behind the chains. But certainly in any game, game adjustments are huge. And I felt like we made some of those last week that'll help us. It's something we got to do moving forward. Brett mentioned it after the game. There's analytical data right now through two weeks, and I know it's just two weeks, but Luke is one of the more efficient downfield throwers. You know, Not a major difference. I think that's a strength of his. Uh, I think he's an, ex an extremely accurate passer, uh, particular downfield, and the, and the guys are making plays, making contested tough catches. You know that we've got a lot of confidence in our guys. That's got to be a formula for success for us. Something I believe in greatly is, you know, obviously we want to run the football when the when the box gets loaded. The easiest access to the explosive plays is when you have one on one on the perimeter, and to be able to throw a ball accurately um, with the, with the rhythm and the timing that he did, I think has been really impressive. I think that's a gift of his, and we got to continue to use that as a weapon. Why do you think that the deep passing game is being improved in 2024, you know, compared to last year? Um, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, just it's just through two games. We just, to be honest with you, when the ball's gone up, we've we've owned it. I mean, you look at Pat's plays two weeks ago, and then the other night, a phenomenal play. Zakari made a phenomenal catch. And Malik against Eastern, you know, so. You know, obviously, when it's it's uh, it's the players. You know, it's the players making the play. I mean, it's uh, it's ball placement and going to catch the ball, um, and that's something that you know that that we believe in. We we practice a lot, and it's showing up in games in a great way. And it's got to got to be there for us to be effective offensively. Are you seeing on some of those inside running plays that, that you're struggling to maybe string chunk plays together on those? Yeah, I mean, it's the, it's tough sledding there. I think. Kansas is a really good defense, you know, they, they, they're very well coached and, um, you know, they, they moved some guys and uh, brought some pressures at times that, you know, got us clipped us or, you know, clipped us, but, you know, made the tackle, shoestring tackle and that we were really close to breaking, breaking a long run. And, um, you know, there's a lot of people in the box and our guys played really physical. I thought Kansas played really physical. And so, uh, you know, we had, we had a lot of really good four or five yard runs. We were physical and, um, you know, we had got able to get, you know, a manageable situation in third down. To me, that was the biggest thing for us is the biggest disappointment I had in looking back in the game is we had a third and two, a third and three, and a third and five we didn't convert. And those led to, you know, three and outs. Uh, and, um, you know, you look back on all of them and reflect on, 
how could we have done what we've done differently? You know, there was a call, you know, maybe that I would like to have back, and then the execution wasn't as well, it wasn't executed as well. But those are the critical factors. Is like, you know, if we run a run for four yards or three yards, that's fine. You know, it's when we get to third down and manageable, we got to be able to convert. And that, that, those should be advantage offense when you're in two and three and four. You know, third, seven to ten, those are those are advantage defense, just just statistically speaking. And and we didn't capitalize on those moments where it was in our corner, and that led to us being taken off the field. So it all kind of pieces together, you know. So obviously, we want a two yard run to be a four and a four to be a six, and it's the life of business. And you know, when you're playing a really good defense and a really good opponent, you're it's not you're not just going to run right over them. And uh, but we have to figure out more ways and continue to improve upon our running game and our efficiency there as far as creating, you know, more opportunities to have uh, more explosive plays in the running game. What is there about Maybe the most important yards uh, on the ground in the fourth quarter. What had given you confidence that he was ready for that moment? I'm sorry, you, did you say Khalil? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, just the way he practices, uh, the way he's grown every week. I mean, he's been... Uh, you know, he's just, uh, he's a natural football player. He figures it out, he cares, uh, and he's talented. And those are all good qualities. And so we had a lot of faith in him. I think that was, um, you know, uh, obviously his position coach sees it on a daily basis. I think our whole team sees it. Our coaching staff still that said, hey, I'm going to roll with him. Let's, let's do it. And I think it was a great, it was, it was a good timing for us. And that it gave us a little different feel during the game. And, and Khalil did a great job for us. You put a White Neck and Henderson got into the game a little bit. What, what are you looking for for those guys in the interior? And um, what's just key for that interior offensive line moving forward? Yeah, we're just always trying to, um, at, just like we do at receivers, you know, like uh, at running backs and done it at quarterback before. It's trying to figure out uh, who, who the most consistent, um, you know, presently, um, you know, um, executing, you know, the guys that are currently executing uh, their assignment, no matter what position they are. And so uh, we were just trying to give our guys some other opportunities there at, uh, you know, at, at that right guard spot in particular. zai has been a real sta stable, uh, stable force for us over the last, you know, 20 something games. And when Zai plays like, you know, like he, he played really well the other night, I thought he bounced back from um, probably not his strongest performance the first week and I thought he played well. And responded to that and we're always trying to create depth at all positions and that was just an opportunity for us to let those guys get their feet wet a little bit there and rest die a little bit and it worked out well anything unique about the central michigan defense yeah there's a lot of things that are unique about them that i think they're i mean obviously it doesn't make them unique that they're extremely well coached that's what you would expect at this level and they are um they're they're multiple and they do a good job of moving around and uh, disguising things and the secondary and uh it's a challenging structure to go against. It's, uh, I think, extremely well coached and vetted, and uh, they know how to, the, to play to, to their strengths and to take away the people they're playing uh, their strengths. And so, it'll be a it'll be a tremendous challenge as we move, as we've already moved on from last night, from the previous week, to talking about what's going on this week, um, because we we turned that page late last night and uh, as a team, and uh, our guys are excited to move on to the challenge here at 11 a.m. on Saturday. We talked a lot with Pat in the offseason about consistency. He talked to us about that, wanted to improve that. How have you seen that play out through two games? For, through Pat in particular? Yeah, yeah, Pat's a warrior. I mean, he's he's uh, everything that's good about college football. And, uh, I mean, this guy just, he's a selfless player that will be willing to block. Uh, he feels like a block is just as important as a catch, and, and that is the truth. And uh, he just exudes that. And um, we trust and rely on him a lot. but. Uh, he, he, he works. He's worked his way into who he is. You know, he's got he's got natural gift. He's a big, strong guy that catches the ball well. But he works at it now. He works at his craft. Uh, he studies film. He knows uh, he knows the intricacies of the offense. And when he gets a chance to make a play, our whole team knows that he's going to be able to make it. And uh, he's really grown in that area. And and he has become the alpha of that room. And um, and he's provided tremendous leadership for us there. What you see from you know things were going well for the offense then. Luke made some huge plays. What would that tell you about him and, and his progress as you know, leader of the team? Yeah, that's the name of the game, right, is making plays and, and to make them when the chips are down, um, when, you know, it's in the fourth quarter and, you know, you got a third and, you know, ten or whatever and a third and five. And, you know, it wasn't just him. It was our whole – that's a, that's complimentary football at its best, right? I mean, it's like you got, you got to make, compliment your team and you got to make a play when, it's, when it presents itself. And a couple of those plays, there wasn't much presented. 
um, and, and and he made it right. You know, him and Zakari, and then he threw a check down to Caden and got the first down. And you know, huge plays in the game, obviously. And there were so many of them on all three phases. You know, that were just just those really key moments in the game. And and uh, you know, fortunately for us, we made more of those than the other team did. And that's what happens when you do you win those games. But the, for Luke in particular, I mean, I thought I loved his poise. I loved I loved during the course course of the game, even when it wasn't going well for us, like. He never flinched. He talked through that. We talked through that. What can we do differently? What can we? What are we going to come back with? You know what he liked, what he didn't like, and we've got a, I think, a good thing going in, the, in helping me understand who he is and what he wants and how he plays. And uh, after being with him now for a year, you know, a year and a half, but uh, I was, uh, I was really impressed with his poise in the game the other night, and that's something that we got to have from our quarterback at all times to, to be the best functioning offense that we can be. What you see from him in the first three quarters in the decision making? The same way, just in the conversation we had with you for Luke for yeah. decision making through yeah. the first three quarters. Yeah, yeah. I thought, you know, one of the, I thought it was really good. I thought his decision making was really good. Um, you know, we had we probably had five or six um, shot plays called that just man. I mean, just like it was just like a, it was it was just not good as far as like the luck. I mean, not I don't know, I don't want to pass it off to luck, but like you know we bobbled a snap on one of our shot plays and we had some you know we had a deep shot coming open that we felt really good about uh, another one we had you know a shot play where they brought a pressure that we really hadn't seen and it came so late that we weren't able to see it and we had a shot un unveiling you know down the middle of the field that it was, had a, a score opportunity you know they changed the coverage shell on us one time on a shot you know and that's part of the strategic nature to have answers built into that but like so the decisions were good like it's just there were some things there that um, you know, we were just a little disheveled a little bit at times, but I never saw that uh, for a minute rattle Luke at all. I thought he stayed really poised, but from A to Z, from start to finish, he took care of the ball, you know, in a great way. He gets really good corners, never put the ball in jeopardy against a really good passing defense. And uh, it really did his job to the, you know, and uh, he did his job well and what we asked him to do. And ultimately him taking care of the ball uh, was the difference in the game for us because uh, we protected it. I know you've seen Zakari do this so much, but what's he what's he bring to this team? We have Pat on one side and yeah. him on the other side. Well, I mean, he yeah, I mean, I have. There's really no catch that he makes that surprises me. <laughs> to be honest with you, uh, I've seen it um, time and time again. You know, uh, and you know, I challenged him. I, I called him last week and just said, "Hey, man, for us to go, you know, for us to go win this." Let's win this game. We needed you, you at your best, you know. And uh, he certainly had some plays that he needs back, and he's got to grow from. It's like you know, even though he's a fifth-year player or an older player, like there's there's growing moments. There's things you got to get better at, you know. Uh, putting the ball on the ground and those types of things. He knows that, you know. But like his his he's got just an innate sense on how to play the position, and he always has. And um, I think Steph's done a great job with him, and he's really bought into what we're trying to do here. And you know, he's, uh, it's obviously fun to, you know, for any of our receivers to make plays and in and, and a moment like that, you know, obviously with my history as a Kari, I, I'm not surprised to see that, but I'm not surprised when I see any of our guys make plays because I see them do it in practice all the time. I mean, that's from Hank Beatty to Ashton to Kapka Jones to Malik, all those guys have a skill set that are going to help us win at some point in time if they hadn't already, you know, but Zakari in particular, he's, he's just got a way of tracking the ball and got big old hands and he has a tendency to be able to catch balls that some guys can't catch. Sure, you him a little bit, but when you have a game that only has nine possessions and it's just kind of a quick game from yeah. that standpoint, as a play caller, does that change what you're trying to get accomplished? Because I don't know how many times we're going to get the ball after this drive. You know? Yeah, I mean, we knew going into the game that that was part of the plan, that we wanted to do that. Obviously, we didn't hold off already the bargain well enough. Sure. Um, you know, now the first drive, I believe, was 13 plays, and the last drive took roughly, you know, how many plays it was. 15. Seemed like a lot. Yeah. There's a lot of play calls involved in that, you know. So that in between, there was a lot of a lot of three and outs, you know, to where we didn't manage the clock the way we wanted to be able to manage the clock. Um, so, you know, once the, once the flow of the game kind of – it was just – you could kind of see through the first quarter like that was the, how the game was going to go, right? I mean, it was just going to be one of those. You look up the scoreboard, and there's like eight minutes left in the second quarter, and it's – I don't remember what the score was at that point, but it was a – that was the flow of the game. I've been a part of games otherwise that that at that point in the game, it's 31 to 27, you know, and it's just one of those games. And I do believe games take on those personalities usually, and you can usually tell how they're going to unfold. But for me, nothing shifted. 
you know, like as far as like, hey, we're right on pace here. We just need to go execute our offense. And I just kept calling it the way we had planned it. And our guys, we just broke through. You know, I put them in a little bit better position. Our guys made some plays and we broke through. And, and then obviously in the fourth quarter, we're able to, you know, put two, two good drives together that made the difference in, in the game as our defense held their held theirs. Is there, yeah, a last, last one here, sorry. Is there a challenge in calling plays on a drive that lasts 12, 13, 14, 15 plays? I mean, other than just logistically getting them, getting them in, <laughs> not really, you know. Uh, and at, at that at that point, it was, uh, you know, we, we do a lot of preparation during the week, you know, for uh, even like four minute situations, which we really kind of shifted into there late in that last that last drive, was trying to make sure we were using the clock the best we could and making sure they were going to use their timeouts, you know, and to where when they got the ball back, we wanted to score. You know, we knew a field goal was a big deal there, obviously. We, and uh, to be able to make it a you know a, a six point game and but so we do a lot of the work ahead of time if that makes sense you know and so in that moment we were prepared coach coach does a great job of making us think through those things we talk through those things uh with him as coordinators on friday nights you know to say hey here, here's here's what i anticipate doing in this situation and the game unfolded just like that so it made it easy because the preparation we had done ahead of time um, and uh, that mean it was perfect, but it made it made it more uh, easily available for me to be able to do. All right. Thanks.